Hey, happy 2023. So yeah, yeah, haven't had new content on the channel for a little bit. What happened? There were holidays. It was busy. Then I got a cold. No, it wasn't COVID, thankfully, because I'm not a moron. I'm vaccinated. Enough of a regular ass cold to fuck my voice up, which means you don't get to release full on new content when you have to talk for a living. As for why we're starting off the new content with fucking Velma, well, because it's new and it's trending and people won't shut up about it even though it's both bad and shockingly uninteresting. So yeah, eventually you're getting catch up from when I was sick stuff, but you're also getting Velma because that's a business and I've got bills to pay. I mean, if you'd like to help me not have to chase the algorithm to stay alive and instead cover and produce things that are actually of interest, the Patreon link is right down there. You know, always good to see the numbers go up. Just saying. Anyway, yeah, spoiler for the rest of the review, or view of the thing so far, I guess. Velma is bad and also bad in a very dull, predictable way. Which means nobody should actually be shocked that it managed to be a rare rating success for Warner Brothers and HBO Max, in spite of basically every critic and commentator from every conceivable angle kind of agreeing that it sucks, because in the real world, people just watch stuff on TV, and both culture pundits and the people who get mad about them are completely meaningless to the success or failure of anything, which I should probably take as a glass half empty, glass half full, bagel versus googly eyes, nothing is also everything sense of liberation, but mainly I'm choosing to take as, hey, I can probably expand that out to twice the amount of Velma content and maybe put some money aside this month. But okay, for the sake of due diligence, the high concept here, yeah, is meant to be an adult humor spoof of Scooby-Doo, but without Scooby-Doo taking place when the Mystery Inc. characters were teenagers with the additional swerves of race-blind character recasting vis-a-vis -vis the actors for Daphne Norville, aka Shaggy, and series creator Mindy Kaling as Velma, and an overall genre reframing from traveling detective series to a send-up of spooky high school melodramas in the vein of Buffy, Teen Wolf, Riverdale, and I guess kind of also Smallville. If you give a shit, the nominal setup is that there's some kind of serial killing, maybe, maybe not also with a supernatural element going down in and around the main character's high school and small town, in which Fred becomes a suspect, and Norville may have inadvertently uncovered evidence about as editor of the school newspaper, which may also involve the unsolved missing person case of Velma's mystery novelist mother, whose absence has left Velma herself afflicted with nightmares and PTSD panic attacks featuring old school Scooby-Doo style ghosts whenever she approaches her once favorite hobby of mystery solving. Both cases are also being ineptly investigated by a pair of detectives who also happen to be Daphne's adoptive moms because this is a bad grown-up cartoon, so here's your for some reason legally mandated in the genre Wanda Sykes and Jane Lynch cameo and Daphne and Velma used to be friends but now aren't because girls in high school. If you're grokking that it's an almost painfully lazy setup to the point that it must be lazy on purpose in order to call attention to the laziness, and thus even more lazily make that part of the joke. Have you ever noticed how pilot episodes of TV shows always have more gratuitous sex and nudity than the rest of the series? Oh my god, I have. I, for one, think it's lame. I actually kind of love it. Um, the only hook a good show ever needs is good storytelling. Then why was your favorite part of the Riverdale pilot when Betty and Veronica kissed? Well, because I was instantly called out as tired in the scene! <sighs> Yeah, no shit. The only interesting thing to make note of here is how little the Scooby-Doo update angle actually has to do with anything going on, which is to say not much at all. This is basically just a one-joke spoof show where the joke is, hey, have you noticed every Supernatural show like this has the same predictable characters, tropes, and plot formulas infused with the even more tiresome energy of Mindy Kaling's by now heavily workshopped teehee, I can do the same problematic grown on PC joke as a 50-year-old white guy comic but not get called on it and score double punchline by acknowledging the dichotomy of being intersectionally wink wink guilty but not tee hee humor brand. Why are you sending me non English speaking pregnant immigrants with no health insurance? With literally like burkas and stuff. I thought she might be rich with oil money. Well, she wasn't. She was poor with nothing money. Well, why wouldn't you just tell her no? Because I am not good at saying no, okay? One time I left a flea market with a samurai sword. I just, I need a different kind of patient. More white patients. Done. Well, don't write that. Which isn't necessarily not funny on its own, but does result in material that's not great to begin with getting recycled three times over every single scene. But even then, if it were to drop the licensed IP and just be a not good satire of supernatural teen dramas with quasi original characters, at least we'd be spared the get it because Scooby Doo stuff, which is consistently the weakest part. Never mind the fact that this is a brand that's been rebooted and alternate taked and even adult parodied so many times over the decades that it's mostly annoying 
going to realize just doing the mild conceptual character shifts for Velma, Daphne, and Shaggy in an otherwise straightforward version would actually be more radical than anything the series actually does. I mean, never mind the delightful absurdity that in the time between this series getting announced and actually debuting the regular version Scooby-Doo movie franchise with almost no fanfare until the week of casually not only dropped, oh by the way, classic Velma is canonically gay now officially out into the world, but did so in the context of a cute kids movie where the fact of it isn't even a big reveal or a huge deal in the plot, just treated as it's always been this normal accepted thing by the rest of the characters in their universe. Here are your Scooby Snacks. The cute one's right. Esteban, show them my brilliant observations. Do you know how rare it is for me to like someone other than myself? So paradoxically, makes the point where Velma gets around to it in the third episode feel like this new adult series is like a thousand years old. It's like a show from 2002 coming out now and expecting to still be edgy. In this day and age, you can't speculate about someone's sexuality unless they're famous or peppermint patty. So really all the Scooby-Doo angle is left with is stretching the tired observation that make the main cast basically the Scooby-Doo gang is one of the tropes that every spooky teen show also uses, which was old as observational humor when Buffy was was doing it. So yeah, in a way it's almost refreshing that the only interesting thing about Velma is that it's not even trying to be interesting and failing at that. Because it would really suck, I gotta tell you, if there was some merit to this thing and I ended up feeling a twinge of need to stick up for this or that aspect of it in the face of all the dork lords who were always going to inevitably hate it for existing because they made certain characters not white anymore, but nah, it's just normal shitty David Zaslav era Warner Brothers trash. Minimal effort coasting by on pretext like cartoons with cursing and sex jokes seem to work on the platform and millennials, Gen Xers, and boomers all like Scooby-Doo references. So mash those two things together and people will probably watch the show and it sucks that they're right about that, but it is what it is. I mean, I generally don't do number ratings for stuff that's mid-release so far, so I should probably not do it on this because who knows, maybe it turns it around in the rest of the season. There's only been three episodes at the time of me writing this, I don't know. But yeah, so far, Scooby don't.